Hello and welcome. Today we are doing a review of the newly introduced Feutech Pocket 3 Pocket Gimbal Camera, and in particular we're going to be comparing it against the benchmark DJI Pocket 2. Does the Pocket 2 finally have a rival? Stay tuned and find out. Now, this is my DJI Pocket 2 gimbal camera that I've owned for a couple of years now, and there really is a lot to like about this camera. It's extremely portable, it takes very good 4K video, it has very good audio, particularly because it has an external wireless microphone, but there are a few things I would like to see improved on this camera, and I'm sure I'm not the only user who's waiting for the successor model, presumably the DJI Pocket 3. But it seems that Feutech have beaten DJI to the punch, introducing their Pocket 3. Now, I wish between DJI and Feutech they could come up with some more original names, so for the purposes of this video, we're going to call this one the Feu, and we're going to call this one the DJI. Now, as I went through my planning, I realized there was just far too much material here to be covered in a single video. So I'm going to split this up into separate videos. This one is going to be focused on the comparison between the Feu and the DJI, in particular from their overall features and capabilities, and also the video and audio quality under different filming environments. In separate videos, we're going to look at the tracking capabilities of the Feu, particularly in comparison to the DJI. And in a third video, we're going to look at the capabilities provided by the detachable head of the Feu. And there we're going to compare it not only to the DJI camera, but we'll also compare it to using an action camera or even a 360 camera and see how the Feu measures up there. Now, there is a lot to cover during this video, so I'm going to post the chapters over here, and you can jump straight to the section that you're interested in. You should also be able to find that on the timeline of the video as well. Before we get started, just a quick disclaimer. This video is not sponsored or paid for in any way. All of the items featured in this video were purchased with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. If you enjoy the video, please remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel and also hit the notifications button so you can be notified whenever new material posts. So on the surface, both of these cameras offer pretty similar features and capabilities. They both have motorized three-axis gimbals for stabilization. They both offer video recording up to 4K resolution at 60 frames per second, and also 1080p resolution at much higher frame rates for slow motion mode. They both offer the ability to take still images, including automated panorama shots, time lapses, motion time lapses, and they both offer the ability to track a subject while recording. But let's focus on the key differences between the two, starting out with the DJI. Now, first and probably most importantly is the sensor on the DJI. This is a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor versus the 1 over 2.3 inch sensor in the Feutech which is about 75% larger in area. So this should give you better image quality and video quality, particularly when it comes to low light conditions. Secondly, the focusing mechanism on the DJI is a variable focus system, as opposed to a fixed focus system on the Feutech. Now, again, this should result in better image and video quality. The third thing I wanted to mention on the DJI is the ability to add an external microphone. Now, if you buy the Creator Combo Kit, you get this do-it-all handle, which includes a 3.5mm jack for adding pretty much any kind of external microphone. 
but that same kit also comes with a dedicated wireless microphone that wirelessly connects to the do-it-all handle and not only provides a microphone functionality but also acts as a remote control to start and stop the camera. Now the Feu also offers a couple of advantages. The most obvious one of course being the ability to detach the gimbal head and control it remotely using the handle. This of course allows you to place the gimbal head in a number of different positions that would be pretty difficult to do when dealing with the entire camera. Now secondly on the Feu you have a larger screen. Now it's only 1.3 inches versus about 1 inch on the DJI but that small increase in size really does make a difference when it comes to the usability of the camera. The final thing I wanted to mention on the Feu is its tracking capability. Now, although both cameras do offer tracking capability, the DJI is limited to face tracking, and it's also limited to operation only at resolution up to 1080p. The Feu claims to have more advanced tracking capability, including both face and subject tracking, which also works at 4K resolution. So this is something we'll definitely have to test out later on. Now, I certainly don't want to do an in-depth tutorial on the operation of both systems, particularly because they're both very similar in the way you operate the camera. Both cameras have similar button layouts, they have power buttons on the side, and they have various buttons for controlling different aspects of the camera, like the mode of the gimbal, starting and stopping recording, and so on. Now, one of the key differences is on the Feu, you have a separate slider control for the zoom, and a joystick for the position of the gimbal. Whereas on the DJI, the single joystick does both functions. I can control the head of the gimbal, or double clicking on here changes it to zoom mode for zooming in and out. So a slight advantage there I think for the Feu. Now when it comes to the more in-depth features, they both have very similar menu-based systems and they both operate in very similar ways. Although as you can see, I think the Feu also has a slight advantage here just simply based on its larger screen. That being said, the DJI does tend to have a little bit more detail and flexibility in its overall control. But when it comes to the overall design, there is a significant difference between the approach that the two manufacturers have taken. So starting with the DJI, I think the Pocket 2 is really designed as a super compact camera that provides high quality video and stills capability, including stabilization, and it's designed to be used in a handheld type fashion, but of course can be mounted to a tripod as well. Now I should point out that in this super compact form it does not have wireless connectivity and also does not support the wireless microphone. For that you need to add the do-it-all handle. Now the do-it-all handle integrates seamlessly with the rest of the body as you can see and this adds wireless connectivity as well as supporting an external microphone both through the 3.5mm jack on the side and also a 2.4GHz receiver for the dedicated DJI wireless microphone. And as you can see it's still a super compact device. Turning our attention to the Feu, I find that the focus of this camera is definitely more on the capabilities of this detachable head, something we will look into more detail in a separate video. But when it comes to operation as a handheld camera, it does mean that the camera has a few compromises, not least of which is the fact that it is quite a bit larger, bulkier and heavier than the DJI. And also, when you look at this design of the way these fit together, it looks almost as if they sent one team out to design the camera head, a separate team out to design the handle, and then afterwards they figured out how they put it together. And it's a little bit awkward, as you can see. And even when it's together, it doesn't quite look right. Now, don't get me wrong, it sits kind of nicely in the hand, 
but it's not very practical, particularly if you consider when you want to put this away after you're done filming and you want to put it into a pocket or a bag, it's not very convenient. Now if we compare that to the DJI, it comes with this holster that it just slides inside and then it's very simple to just throw this into a pocket or a bag. The gimbal head is protected as is the rest of the camera. And even if you have it configured with the do-it-all handle, it still fits in and is still super compact and easy to carry around. If I look at the solution for the Feu, they provide you with this rather large cup that goes over the top of the camera. You can't actually get it on with the handle attached. So you have to take off the handle and put it in here and then carry these separately. It's just all a little bit awkward. Okay, let's start out with a basic side-by-side -side video comparison. Now here we have both cameras set to 4K resolution, 30 frames per second, and everything is set to fully automatic. That's automatic exposure, white balance, the color profile has been set to the standard color profile, and of course you can adjust the colors in post anyway. Now when it comes to image detail, I don't think there's a lot to choose between the two. The Feu does a pretty good job in spite of its smaller sensor. Where the Feu starts to struggle is handling the contrast between the very bright and very dark parts of the picture. You can see that the DJI handles the bright sunlight a lot better. Notice also how the DJI does a better job of maintaining image detail even in the shadows and dark parts of the picture. Finally, I think the DJI stabilization seems a little bit smoother, but we'll check that out in more detail in the next section. In this next test, we are still recording at 4K resolution, but now at 60 frames per second and slowing it down to 30 frames per second in post. I'm also moving as slowly and smoothly as possible in order to create the best possible cinematic footage. Again, we can see the superior dynamic range offered by the larger sensor of the DJI. Maintaining image detail in both the very bright and very dark parts of the image. On the Feu footage you can also see occasional noise artifacts on the darker and high contrast parts of the image. As I turn you can see that the DJI provides a much more smooth motion. And again you can see the Feu struggling with the bright sunlight flare. As I walk forward, it seems that both cameras are doing a pretty good job at providing stabilization. But again as I begin to turn, you can see the shakiness in the Feu image. So it's not clear whether this is from the gimbal or perhaps has something to do with internal image processing. Okay, for our first test we are indoors in a studio type environment and we are going to do a quick comparison of the video and audio quality. I have the room light set to around about 30% and I'm being lit from the front by two key lights either side of our cameras here. So we want to see how each camera deals with this studio type environment. Now one thing you may notice is a difference in the background because the D 
DJI on my left uh, has a focusing mechanism. It will focus on my face and the background may tend to be somewhat defocused. Whereas on the Feu, it has a fixed focus system, so everything is pretty much in the same type of focus, both foreground and background. So now let's turn our attention to the audio quality. So again, we are in our nice studio quiet environment here. Currently, you're listening to me on the onboard microphone of the DJI. And now I'm going to switch over to the onboard microphones of the Feu. So now you are listening to me through the onboard microphones of the Feu. Hopefully you can hear me OK and I won't have to boost this in post. And let's switch. So now let's turn our attention to the audio quality. So again, we are in our nice studio quiet environment here. Currently, you're listening to me on the onboard microphone of the DJI. And now I'm going to switch over to the onboard microphones of the Feu. So now you are listening to me through the onboard microphones of the Feu. Hopefully you can hear me OK and I won't have to boost this in post. And let's switch back over to the onboard microphones of the DJI so you can get a comparison between the two. And finally, let's just switch back over to the onboard microphones of the Feu so you can get that final comparison of the two microphone and audio qualities. Okay, let's take a look at selfie mode on both cameras. Now I have both set up for 4K 30 frames per second, everything in automatic mode, auto exposure, auto white balance, standard color profile, um, nothing out of the ordinary. You can see already that the DJI has a much narrower field of view, but if you buy the combo kit or if you buy it separately, you can also get a a magnetic snap-on lens adapter which will widen your field of view considerably um, definitely recommended for filming of this type so let's just take a look at the uh, video quality first off keep in mind that one of the benefits that the DJI has that it does have autofocus so if I move further away and closer you might be able to tell the difference whereas the Feu Tech has a fixed focus mode, so I'll just do a little bit of walking um, so you can get an idea of the video quality. Okay, now let's take a listen to the audio quality, starting out with the DJI. So the sound you're hearing currently is coming from the DJI, and I'll talk a little bit further and then I'll switch over to the Feu Tech. So now you're hearing the sound coming from the Feu Tech microphones. Both of these tests are using the built-in microphones of each camera. I'll go a little further and I'll switch back to the DJI so you can hear me again on the DJI to get an idea of the sound quality on the onboard microphones of the DJI. And then I'll switch back to the Feutech. So again, you'll get a listen to the onboard microphone quality of the Feutech. Now when it comes to audio, one area where the DJI offers an advantage is its ability to add an external microphone. And if you buy the Combo Creator Kit, you get this wireless microphone as part of that kit. And it's more than just a microphone, it actually will operate the camera remotely to start and stop recording as well, which is a really useful thing to have. Now right now you're listening to me on the onboard microphones of the DJI and what I'll do is simply power this on and when I power it on it turns off the onboard microphones on the DJI and then now you're hearing me through the uh, external microphone so I can now walk and talk with my external microphone. Now I don't know if there was any difference in the sound quality at this very short distance and in order to also evaluate the comparison with the Feutech, let's now switch over to the Feutech. So now you're listening to me again through the onboard microphones of the Feutech. So now I'll switch back over to the DJI. Now you're listening to me again on the external microphone that I have here on my shirt. 
um, from the DJI microphone. Once again, if I just switch back quickly to the Feutech onboard microphones, Feutech uh, currently does not support any form of external microphones. Let's hope that's something that will change with a later firmware update. Now, of course, the value of an external microphone is much better when you're talking at distance. So again, now I'm talking to you on the external microphone connected to the DJI. And as you can see, I can go pretty far away from the camera and still get a good signal. I've actually tested this as far as 50 feet. That's as far as I've been with it. And it worked just fine, even at those kind of distances. Now, if I switch back to the Feotech camera at this point, Obviously, the sound quality is not going to be very good at these kind of distances until I get closer to the camera. So as I move closer, presumably the onboard microphones will do a better job of picking up my voice. And once again, we'll switch back to the DJI microphone to get that same comparison. And as I walk away, once again, you can hear that the sound quality is the same, regardless of my distance from the camera. But if I switch to the Feutech, again, you can hear that the sound quality definitely diminished at a distance and requires me to be much closer to the camera in order to get a good sound. So at the beginning of the video I asked the question, does the DJI Pocket 2 finally have a rival? Well, based on the testing we did in this particular video, I have to say that's a no from me. Now, if you look at the different test scenarios that I did, that pretty much covers 90 plus percent of what I do with my DJI. And in those type of scenarios, clearly the DJI is the better camera. It has better image quality, it has significantly better sound quality, particularly when you consider the external microphone options, and also it's just a more practical and pocketable solution. Now that being said, the detachable head on the Feu certainly does offer a number of intriguing possibilities where it may compete not only with the DJI but also with an action camera or 360 camera, and that's something we'll cover in a future video. Also, the claimed tracking capabilities of the Feu is also something I want to look into in more detail to see how well it tracks fast moving subjects and things of this nature also in 4K. So again, that will be the subject of a future video. So please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button and you'll be notified when those videos post. And finally, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching our video today. If you enjoyed it, please make sure and hit the like button and remember to subscribe to the channel for a lot more videos on tech, travel and leisure. Thank you again.